It's right it's here, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't What's see the day for it. Live with the Beastly Thought Show. What's happening, guys? How you been doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Look at this little piece of hair I got. Oh no, it's on this side. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> with this piece of hair all day. That fucker won't stand down. It's it's like I'm up and I'm ready to be seen. That one piece of hair all day. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's he's a standout. He's a standout amongst right. millions. You can't contain me. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Man, it's been a good week. Real good week. Lots of games played. Lots of news. How you guys doing? I'm doing great. I'm in a really good mood today. I had a photo shoot this morning out in the beautiful weather. It snowed. It snowed. It was 40 <sighs> degrees, but it was snowing. What's up with that? Whoa. That's not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That snow in Connecticut, man, it's real, real rough. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm I'm down here in Georgia, so I don't get I don't have to face those tumultuous uh, situations. But uh, one day it'll happen. One day. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm from Ohio, so you know I, I'm used to it. But yeah, down here, it's a little, a little Ohio, bit different, sure. man. Yeah, so we're gonna start the show now and talk about what we've been playing. So, Ravi, you want to talk about what you've been playing this week? Well, first, let me just say, Ravi, I love the new haircut. Yeah, man. Know, you don't everybody. have any hairs on that place, man. That shit is high and tight. Yes, it is. It looked like it was, it looked like it was made that. made for the headset. That just makes perfect sense. Did you get it cut with the headset on? It just it's so good. It's no, a Turtle I Beach did. exclusive haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Turtle Beach can go exclusive haircuts. Yeah. Our new sponsor too. By oh shit. <laughs> yeah, so Robbie, what have you been playing this week, man? Oh man, like the only thing I can think of that I've really been playing is the Uncharted Collection I've played through. I've beaten number one, I've beaten two, I've beaten both on hard. I am absolutely loving those games. Like, I love them even more than I did the first time because really playing through them all once and, like, getting the story and just kind of coming back to it, it's wonderful. I'm on three. I'm at, I think, chapter eight, so I'm getting there. Love those games. That's really all I've been playing, though. Like, I've been just... I've honestly just been jumping into party chats, talking with friends and stuff like that. I haven't been... Uh, Playing that much, but so yeah. so. How many hours would you say you sank into the Nathan Drake collection so far? Oh God, like at least 30, 40 hours, I think. Wow. Okay, yeah, so that's a of time. great, great value. Geez. So okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a game that's going to definitely take up your time. So don't feel bad that you've only been playing that game. No, right. absolutely not. I love those games. So. Yeah, I actually, uh, I've been playing a little bit of that myself, too. I'm going to go ahead and go into my little spill of what I've been playing. Uh, I bought that game for my sons when I got them a PS4. I told you guys last week that I was going to surprise them with a PS4. I'm sure you guys yeah. saw that video. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when Kate saw that their box had the Nathan Drake collection in it, she was, like, real salty about it. She wanted it, too. So I had to leave the house and go immediately and get another one for us. So, yeah, so I got that game too. I, I put maybe three or four hours in on the. Wait, wait, you bought two cop? You bought another copy? How come you? No, no. Didn't, didn't you I'm just... sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. We have the the digital version. We have the digital version. My you can't share the digital version among multiple accounts. Only two. So my boys have one on theirs, and then the other is for mine and Kate's PlayStation. Oh, okay. That's that's how it works. But I put maybe about three or four hours in. Uh, on the Nathan Drake collection, personally, the game looks phenomenal, man. Uh, it really does. I, it doesn't look as good as your typical polished PS4 game, but it definitely looks better than something you see on PS3. Uh, and I, I can't wait to get more into it. It's just really hard for me, you know, the whole work situation. Kids stay at home. Uh, and um, I've also been playing Rift and Destiny. I've really gotten into that. Uh, playing this new mode in Destiny. Of course, it's been uh, available now for a few weeks, but all week I've been playing that and really, really enjoying it. And other than that, it's been more of a work week for me. And those weeks I really don't like so much because it's more work and less play. But last night it all came to a head, and it all made sense for me. At the end of the night last night when I finally went to sleep, my younger brother DJ came into town from Carolina. He's been here all weekend. He came over, had dinner with us the night before last. He came over last night. Wanted to watch The Office on Netflix. And then I reminded him years ago of a game we used to play, and I told him I had it. And so I went and got it, and it was this game here. Do you guys remember Dance Dance Revolution? Mm -hmm. yeah. DDR Max 2, right? So I went in my, in my room, I came in here, and I reached under my bed and pulled out two mats, brought it into the, the living room, and we got down for about three hours on this game. Oh, my. Uh, one quick question. You live in an apartment, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, what floor do you live on? On the first floor. 
<laughs> that's too bad. <laughs> that sucks. Yes, it is too bad. You, gotta, you must get a lot of noise complaints. Oh, man. No, we, I've, I've never had one. I'm respectful. But last night I turned the sound bar on and everything, so they probably heard uh, quite a bit of music. I don't know if they thought, what the hell are they listening to down there? But we had a great time. We played from about 9.30 to around 1 or 1.30. So we played the hell out of that game. We finally got done with that. I went and took another shower. My wife went and took a shower. She was getting down. My sons were learning the game. And so I told them, let's play some more dance-centric games. So we pulled out the Dreamcast and played Space Channel 5. You guys remember this game? Mm-hmm. With Ooh La La, the reporter? It's I not don't, really – it's a great game. We played that for about another 30 minutes, and then we played Buster Groove on PlayStation 1. And these are games that you just basically control the, char- the characters with your controller. You don't have to move anymore because – Lots of throwbacks. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm an, I'm an old guy. You know, I still love the the originators of the new age. I love my PlayStation. You know, I love my and Nintendo. And I'm not too old, but I think we've made this clear a lot of times, so yeah. I won't get into it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no it's no problem. I'm sure we'll all know when you get first hair on ball, Robbie. But yeah, it, it's been one of those great gaming <laughs> gaming nights for me. I really got down last night, and that's what I was doing. I wish I'd played a little bit more. Actually, there's one more game I played. I played. Uh, I started three days ago playing Call of Duty Ghosts. Whoa. Oh, really? On Man, I had some great games. I, I've really been wanting to play. I was looking at some old footage of me playing Black Ops 3 and how excited I am for it. I was talking to my wife, and she was like, well, why don't you play Advanced Warfare? And I was like, nope, I don't want to no. play Advanced Warfare. <laughs> okay. so, That's not the same. I didn't oh, want to play pass. Advanced Warfare, and it took forever for me to download the installation again for Ghosts. But, um, wow, it really felt good. It felt good. It felt similar. You know, and uh, I, I whooped a little bit of ass on there and made a few few gameplay videos, and that was my week. Now, Mr. Awesome. Rabbit, I'm sure I could play the soundbite, but I'm not going to do that this week. <laughs> I wish I played a little ghost, because as soon as you said it, I'm like, man, I like that game. I know it's, it's good. a popular Call of Duty on the planet, but I loved that game. I thought it was a lot of fun. We had a lot. Well, we actually had a lot of fun. Uh, Kate and I were doing some split screen. I was running around. You should go ahead and reinstall it, man. We could play some. I don't think I need to. I think it's still on my PS4 and on my Xbox One. We should. Okay, well, just let me know what you want to play, brother. All right, I'm ready brother. To go. I think I'll reinstall it too. Yeah, play with your brother. Yo, man, yeah. we're supposed to be brothers. <laughs> Yo, man, we getting that Call of Duty go? Wait, what's this jive y'all talking? Turkey? All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, right. I played some Iron Banner this week. Uh, Iron Banner, I got to say, has been a much better experience than in the past. Uh, Iron Banner is the uh, kind of more competitive uh, version Crucible. of the Crucible where power matters. So the better gear you bring into it, the more damage you do to uh, opponents and the more the less damage they do to you. So it's been nice to try out the new gear that we've gotten since the Taken King in the Iron Banner. I've been having a lot of fun with the Thousand Yard Stare, um, with the Hawksaw Pulse Rifle, uh, with some of the new exotic weapons. I've been having a blast in the Iron Banner. There's a, it feels to me there's a lot less lag in the Iron Banner this time around than there has been in the past, uh, so that's really a welcome change. Um, Unfortunately, we were supposed to get Trials of Osiris this weekend, which I was really, really looking forward to. I know you, I've told you guys plenty of times about my love for that game mode. But, but a certain glitch happened. Yeah, unfortunately, a glitch was exploited with uh, the Hunters uh, where they could basically get unlimited supers, like basically a never-ending super. So what? They actually yeah. postponed the Trials of Osiris once that glitch was uncovered by the community. Uh, so that's to be determined when that that's going to actually happen. And then we also heard the hard mode raid is going to come out next Friday. So that's really exciting. I can't wait to jump into hard mode raid, see all the changes that are coming out. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, I also got a new phone, so I started playing some uh, iPhone games, and I downloaded... Uh, check this out. First of all, i got to show you this. Peace. Oh, my God. It's so pretty. <laughs> Just so now I've got two. We <laughs> <laughs> got the Jade Rabbit. <laughs> um, I downloaded. I think it's called Pac Man 256. Yeah, Pac Man 256 for the iPhone, and it's kind of a fun game. It's like an isometric version of Pac Man. That's also like an endless runner. So you're basically just running and running, and the screen is kind of like disassembling into like uh, numbers and like bits. 
behind you, so you basically have to just keep going as fast as you can, like, diagonally up the screen. So imagine playing Pac-Man with the ghosts and everything, but you also have to outrun, like, you know, the the deconstruction of the game. It's kind of fun, you know? It's it's a nice little it's iPhone game. It controls Pac-Man pretty well. Pac-Man 256? Yeah, Pac-Man 256. Is it on uh, Android or only iOS? Do you know? um, I don't know. I have it for iOS. I don't know if it's... I bet it's available for Android. Everything seems to come out for both now, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so that that's actually been pretty fun. It's, like, been the game that I go to when I'm just sitting around, you know, waiting for something else to happen. So are you done with your MMO? Or you My MMO. MMO. Not MMO, but uh, your MOBA that you've been playing. Oh, yeah. yeah I kind of just lost interest. It's not that it's a bad game. It's just that, you know, there's only so much fucking time in the day. Yeah. <laughs> you now, know? i, I got to ask you a question about Destiny, Briar Rabbit. Mm-hmm. Have you gotten the Zellos Supercell yet? No, that's an exotic that I'm still missing. After many, many three of coins, that is the gun that doesn't drop for me. I've gotten about five Hawk Moons, about five... Uh, Suros Regimes. Oh my god. But I have not gotten the Supercell to drop yet. I In the Iron Banner, I've noticed that I have been completely annihilating people with that weapon. Really? And I was telling Kate, Kate was like, God damn it, I want your gun. I said, Briar has it by now. I know he has it. No, so it must, be, it must be pretty hard to get. Wow. It's just was- random. It's RNG based, so it's like you just got to sit there and hope to get it. I've been really happy with the Suros Regime. I've been super happy with the J Rabbit in the Iron Banner. Um, I've actually been using a combination of Surus Regime and a sniper rifle, the Thousand Yard Stare, to great effect. Oh, that, that's it's, killing me. Oh, God. That the Thousand Yard Stare. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. It's been destroying me. It's Man. a great sniper rifle. Um, and then I kind of switch heavy weapons depending. The Sleeper Simulant has been a lot of fun. Have you guys gotten the Sleeper Simulant? No, I don't, but I've been destroyed. No, because I haven't played Destiny in a couple weeks now. <laughs> I'm just so never down on that. It's an exotic fusion rifle that's also a heavy weapon. Um, and, you know, instead wow. of using a rocket or a heavy machine gun, it's a fusion rifle that has, like, a charge time, it's which like should a, be a disadvantage, uh, but it's so fun to, like, pluck an enemy right out of the sky with one shot with the thing from across the map. It's actually a really fun gun to use in the Iron Banner. Wow. Uh, so that's it, man. It's been uh, Iron Banner and Pac-Man 256 for me. <laughs> <laughs> totally different opposite games, but uh-huh. awesome. <laughs> hey, that's that's the third wheel of a tricycle, man. We're not all playing the same stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching who've been playing way different games that we've been playing, and that's what we're here for. Talk about what Absolutely. we've been doing. Talk about video gaming in general. You guys, so, uh, uh, we talked a lot last week about um, battle. Are we Help in no, no, we haven't what? talked about that one in about 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. Um. Battlefront, thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, what do you guys? You guys still have like an overall favorable impression on that? You guys still planning on buying it? I am so like here's the Robbie thing. definitely is. I'm definitely more positive about that game than I was going into the beta. You guys know I was. I think we were all very skeptical of this game. Mm-hmm. Like first of, is there going to be enough content? And obviously, is the game going to be working well on day one? Like how is it going to be functioning? I was super impressed that the beta literally had, like, no lag at all. The connection was spot on, and, like, it's a ton of fun. But I'm hesitant to buy it because I'm still, like, I don't know if it's going to hold me enough and really be worth a $60 game, especially now that they've announced the $50 season pass this week. And it just, that just seems like a lot of money for a multiplayer-only game. I'm just yeah. really not sure if I'm going to pick it up or not. I love the core game. It's a lot of fun. But. This is how I feel about it. I really love the beta. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Robbie, that there wasn't really any issues with the network. It all worked seamlessly. I hate the party system. But in-game, everything worked flawlessly. It was a lot of fun. Just the two modes that I played and the kind of campaign-ish little mode that you get on the side. I had a lot of fun. I don't mind waiting for this, though. Because it is a multiplayer-only experience, I don't mind waiting until the you know until the judgments come in on whether this is worth sixty bucks. I don't mind waiting you know for a few weeks or whatever until people say, hey, look, this game is great, uh, but you can wait till it's thirty or forty dollars. You know, because I really got burned with Evolve. That sticks with me. It really does. It burns because I had a lot of faith in it initially because I played the beta. I was like, this is fucking awesome. But then you realize that's all there is to it. On the outward, at least, Battlefront appears to have a lot more replayability than um, than Evolve does. 
but how much really you know how much is how much replayability is there really because if you if you look at battlefronts modes and then you look at just the crucible and the different types of crucible maps and modes there are in destiny i think destiny has more modes right there and that's only in crucible so yeah. It kind of makes you wonder, you know, I don't mind just being patient. If you don't know what to do, don't do anything. That's like the best thing to do. If you don't know, because you're going to make a, a mistake, more than likely. So rather than just throw my money at, you know, this Battlefront game, I want to wait until more knowledgeable people, people who've really spent lots of time with the game, can come out and say, well, I don't know if this is really worth 60 bucks. This is all you're going to get. And if it's going to be a rep rep you know, repetitive situation where it's all you're doing is playing the same kind of modes over and over again, I really don't mind waiting for a more fulfilling experience. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, Beastly. I think that's an awesome way to look at Battlefront. Like, we're all, I think we all enjoyed it quite a bit, but we're all still somewhat skeptical of how the game is going to turn out at launch, like how much content there's going to be, and obviously if it's worth the money. Like, I, I think that's a great idea. I think I'm probably going to wait for this one, too. I haven't pre-ordered it, so... I, it might just come one out. One of month. us. One of us. Yeah. yeah we'll what see. about you, Briar? You you brought up the question. What are your thoughts? I know you got. I, I liked the game this. while I was playing it in beta, but like after I like kind of sat back, like the beta ended, and I sat back and thought about it. I was like, is there enough depth here? Like, is there enough of a? Is there enough to keep me going? You know, like I'll probably buy it. I'm I'm almost definitely gonna buy it because it's Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, uh, and it felt like Star Wars. It was fun it really because did, it yeah. was Star Wars. But it felt amazing. Of the two multiplayer levels that they showed, one of them was just kind of unexciting, and the other one on Hoth was exciting, but completely unbalanced. Way like, unbalanced. Yeah. yeah, it's like wow, I can't even believe that you think this is acceptable. <laughs> The Rebels get, like, no chance at all. It's like, no. Right. Yeah. But it was fun. Uh, you know, it, we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm probably going to buy it. I don't, I don't know how much I'll stick with it. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right, I was, well, just curious. I, I was curious to what you guys were thinking about it. Because I think we talked it up pretty hard yesterday, but or last week, but we were just coming off of playing it for the first time. And yeah. I just wanted to do a little follow-up on that. Time I think that's flies. awesome, Briar, because I think a lot of people, like, our impressions – definitely change a lot as a game goes on over time. Like, you know, usually when we play something, we're super excited, like the Battlefront beta, and we're kind of just like, holy shit, this feels like Star Wars, and like, this is incredible. Then as, as time goes on, you break it down more, and you see that, oh, this wasn't so good, and maybe this game won't be worth it. So I think that's well, awesome to revisit. Well, that. well, the hype can really change your perception of things. And then, like Briar said, when you kind of sit back and look at the experience, you realize it's more of a more of a base base. Experience is nothing really super extravagant about it, you know. Absolutely. So it seems like we're all on the same page here. Should we do some news? Sure. Do 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 do. That's my time for some news. Coming in on the wire, hot off the presses. Yes. Halo Five Guardians will require up to sixty gigabytes of install space on the Xbox One. Wow. Are you surprised by this? I don't think I am. <laughs> I think the actual like core install is about 43 gigabytes, like the actual game, but this is how much space, obviously, you're going to need. You're going to need at least 60 gigs so the game will install, but the actual file size will be around 43. That's still up there with some of the larger games, like 43 gigabytes for one game. That's an insane amount of memory. That really is. I'd like, I'd like to do like a, a dream sequence, flashback sequence to... Was it November 2014 when the new consoles were fresh and new? And I was saying, why is there only 500, 500 gigabytes in these hard drives? Yes. <laughs> like no you can buy a one terabyte hard drive for like 60 bucks. Yeah, well, you can get a why two terabyte. Why did they put a 500 terabyte into both of these? Both of these. Oh, 500 terabyte. That's 500 funny. gigabyte. Sorry. Oh, 500 shit. Gigabyte. 500 terabyte. I need one of those. That would be nice. I'll take that. That'd be I'd good. take 500 yeah, terabytes. Yeah. <laughs> I've never well, deleted thing. anything again. The thing is, though, at least with the PlayStation 4, you're able to upgrade and it won't void your warranty. Uh, the Xbox One, they, the situation they have, at least you can get you know, an exter external hard drive. I, I actually wanna... like the Xbox One solution better because you can just add drives like easily. You know, you just plug yeah, in the USB like and go. Do you think that the PS4 may one day be able to do that? Probably. I would uh, they have said they are not planning on it, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how they would do that, but here's the thing. 
I have a ton of friends, especially on Xbox, that are huge Halo fans. Like, a lot of my real-life friends are huge Halo fans, and we plan to play this game day one. We're going to be playing through the campaign, four-player co-op. Like, I am... My excitement right now is through the roof for this game, especially with all the trailers that are coming out. We are so close. It's this, and then we have Call of Duty, and then we have oh, Fallout, God. and then we have Battlefront. Like, we're Call really Call close now. Yeah, it's... I can't wait. Call of October's Duty. October's kind of slow, but... November's going to be oh, hot. Dude, holy yeah. shit. I will have um, Halo day one, and uh, I'm going to be looking for you, Mr. Rabbit, to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be waiting with a sniper rifle again. <laughs> <laughs> Ping! <laughs> um, 60 gigabytes is a lot. I mean, that's, you know, that's a significant portion of the hard drive on the Xbox One if you have the 500 gigabyte version. Now they sell one terabyte versions. Um, and... I don't know. At launch, you couldn't actually manage your storage on Xbox One, can nope. you now? I believe you can. You can now. Yeah. Because at launch, you couldn't. Like it was all like behind the scenes. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think so. I think yeah, there's I believe, more. I believe that was added. Yeah. Uh, they got the new uh, quite Xbox a few experience coming out. That's like less Windows 80, which is good. I haven't it's heard Windows 10 about it yet, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I don't care really, to be honest with you. I'm buying Halo Five, whatever else is on my hard drive can split. <laughs> your Xbox yeah. Ones, guys, are you are your Xbox Ones out of space? Mine is virtually out of space. I'm at ninety. Mine is guys. struggling. I really need a new hard drive. I think because my birthday is coming up soon. I think that's all I'm gonna ask for. I'm like, just give me a hard drive for both these consoles because I need them desperately. Like, I've yeah, got a, I think a two terabyte plugged into my Xbox One, so it hasn't been. Yeah. I want to go. I'm actually uh, heavily considering within the next week or two getting a two terabyte upgrade for my PS4 because mm-hmm. I can't stand it. Like when I wanted to play Call of Duty Ghost, I had to delete so many games just to put it on there. I needed 60 gigs just to install yeah. that, that information. After and a so while, it's like yeah, hybrid drives. They're like part SSD, part spinning disk drives. Mm-hmm. And they, they have a pretty good performance boost for your PS4. Yeah. And it, they are compatible with the PS4, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Good. Good information there, Mr. Rabbit. All right. Uh, what's next? Treyarch discusses the future of Call of Duty franchise in Black Ops series. Yeah. So they had some things to say about this. I'll open it up right here. So it says Treyarch has discussed the future of the Black Ops branch because obviously Black Ops Three is about to come out. That's work, what they're working on. But now they kind of go into what's next for the studio and what's kind of next for the franchise. So speaking to IGN, Black Ops 3 director of Campaign and Zombies, Jason Blundell, explained that while the ending of Black Ops 3 won't be open in like Black Ops 2, he does believe there are more stories to tell in the universe. There possibly could be another Black Ops game. We had multiple stories at the end of Black Ops 2, and people had different outcomes. Then we kind of picked an idea, and that kind of connected into Black Ops 3. I'll leave that mysterious. But the end of Black Ops, hmm, here's the thing. I think there's always stories to be told. One guy asked me if we were going to keep going into the future, but the point is there are always stories to be told. That could be the future, that could be the past. Absolutely. People ask about World War II, and I've done my fair share of World War II shooters. I'd do it again, but I'd have to have something new to say about it. And that's pretty much what he said. Yeah, there's only so many times you can run up on, on Normandy, man. Yeah. I don't and know. I could do it one more time, I think. It is fun. <laughs> yeah. World War II. And the thing is, because there was a time before now that we all feel like the modern and futuristic shooters are kind of milked, and there's a lot of them. It used to be World War II. Like, that was the thing. Big time. Every game was World War II back then. Yeah, Yeah. so if Treyarch or Infinity War or Sledgehammer, if any of them went back to World War II, it would be cool. Because looking at the the future of the franchise, we know that Infinity War, it's Call of Duty, is next year. That's either going to be Ghosts 2 or something else, and then after that we know that Sledgehammer is back with Advanced Warfare 2, which none of us are excited for. Please don't be Advanced Warfare 2, and then Treyarch will be back again. So do you guys think we could get a World War 2 Call of Duty? Possibly. I think, I think there was a lot of interest movie. in a World at War 2. Before we knew there was going to be a Black Ops 3, there were a lot of rumors that we were going to get a World at War 2. Yeah. And I feel like people were pretty excited about that. You know, Going back to you know that style of gameplay, getting getting more of a boots on the ground type of Call of Duty. People were interested in. You know, Advanced Warfare left a bad taste. I think people. I, I could go for. I could go for a new a new take on World War Two. You know, absolutely. There's nothing like that this generation, even close. Yeah. 
So I'd love to see something like that. Yeah. Brian, oh, how I'm seeing like some kind of alternate history of like the 1950s, you know, like the Nazis won World War II, so now we're I'd in the love 50s to see that. Yeah, be kind of like you know, home kind of you kind of get those like kind of weird like you know how like it always seems like Russia you know is in there and like you get like kind of weird weapons and weird combinations of like you know what would have happened if the German scientists stayed in in Nazi Germany as opposed to coming to America or going to Russia and building nukes you know it's a, it'd be fun to check that out and it's always a fun way of kind of exploring what could have could have happened with weapons and you know, making up new stories, I, I think that'd be a lot of fun. A World at yeah. War II, like, in that kind of sense, would be a lot of fun. Briar, you know i got to ask you specifically, because you were a very passionate and big Call of Duty fan. You are as passionate about Call of Duty as you are about Destiny now. Yeah. How are you feeling about Black Ops 3 at this point? Like, do you think... I know I've asked this before, but at this point, like, what are your thoughts on Call of Duty? Like, do you think it'll bring you back in, or will it kind of redeem I, I, for advanced warfare? I don't think he had a chance to play the beta. I didn't. Um, I didn't play the beta, uh, and to be honest with you, I wasn't. It wasn't because I couldn't play the beta. It's just because I was busy with playing Destiny. Destiny, to me, has just kind of added so much to the FPS genre that, like, going back to just a simple multiplayer shooter, it doesn't hold a lot of appeal at this point. Hmm. Well, I think that may change once you finally play the game, sir. Yeah, we're telling you, it's, look, it's really good. This is it, nothing like Advanced Warfare. It really is good. I'm not. Pulling, you know, I'm not blowing smoke. It's a really good game. You gotta give it a try. It's awesome. Uh, did you guys hear this little side, little uh, bit of news about Call of Duty? Theater mode is returned to Black Ops Three. That's great news. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, I, I was really, really happy about that. I loved theater mode in Black Ops Two. I was pissed off when Ghost didn't have it. Advanced Warfare didn't have it. And I was wondering why. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a great, great perk. They also did a live stream. Uh, I think the day before yesterday. And they showed off a new mode in Black Ops 3, which is kind of like uh, Mirror's Edge. It's yeah, I saw that. That was weird, huh? It's kind of a free-running <laughs> mode. That you have to run through these stages and shoot obstacles and get through to the end. But ultimately, I think that'll make you better off in the game because you'll be your traversal method will be that much more tuned. So That's the uh, take... Black Ops Fridays. They're every Friday up until the launch of the game, they're revealing something new. So next Friday, you'll have something, too. Well, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that, but I'm probably more hyped about theater mode. I'm just happy to see that. The glorious return. Especially for people who don't have capture cards and want to just upload straight from their PlayStations. <laughs> I'm just incredibly excited for Black Ops 3. Like, I miss Call of Duty. I really do. Because I played Call of Duty. Like, I played every single game. I played it just about every day, and I loved it. It didn't really get boring for me. Obviously, we've talked a lot of Advanced Warfare just kind of lost me, and it lost you guys, too. And Black Ops 3, I'm playing that beta, I'm like, this is good. This is really good. And I can't wait. Like, I'm really excited. All right, so continuing on, uh, and this kind of news kind of, I don't know why it irritates me. I really can't pin it down. It kind of pisses me off. Star Wars Battlefront, $50 season pass has been announced. What's it? <sighs> That's the it's, whole thing. They've said there's four expansion packs. That's it. And I'd have to assume that it's probably going to go the similar route to Battlefield, because obviously this is DICE, and I'd have to assume it's the same thing. But i got to be honest, these season passes are getting out of hand. Like, it's every single game. There's either a season pass, or there's some kind of microtransactions. It almost makes me wonder if games need to cost more. Like, $60 just isn't enough. Like, should they be maybe $80, so we don't have to have all this extra stuff crammed in there to exploit yeah. money I don't think that they would ever do that because that would actually minimize their sales. You know, a lot less people would actually buy the game in general. Sixty dollars is actual doable price, and if people can afford the DLC or season passes, then they'll get that at a later date. It's just a lot of money because, say, for Call of Duty, you buy the season pass, it's fifty dollars, it's one hundred and ten dollars. Then you do it again for Battlefront, that's two hundred and twenty, and you just keep going up and up like that's a lot of money for just a couple of games. Yeah, but that's why you have the option of getting it, you know. Very few games do I actually get season passes for. I have to really like a game to be, you know, that passionate about it. And very few of these games have been released if I've yeah. been that passionate about. The and only I game I am, like, guaranteed to buy a season pass for is Call of Duty. Like, I pre-ordered the one for Black Ops 3 because I know what it is, and I know I'm going to like the content. So, and, and, and basically, all this Star Wars Battlefront DLC, all it is is, is uh, basically maps. 
because it's a full multiplayer game. It's all it is. It's just maps. I think they so, said there will be new planets as well, but yeah, obviously that just means maps on different planets. No, they could so. do what Destiny did, and maybe as time goes on, give you kind of a story or a little bit more meat on the bone for you to hold on to in that universe, because Star Wars, man, let's be honest, the universe of Star Wars is lore. It's characters. It's yeah. worlds that we know. And, and they've built this world over the last few decades. We all know what Star Wars is all about. And this game needs to be able to encapsulate more than just the visual aesthetic of what that world is. We need to feel that there's some kind of contained story there. And if they're smart, I think more developers are probably looking at the Destiny model and like, okay, Destiny kind of came out. People were a little iffy on it. But look what's happened a year, two years later. It's a completely different game. Everybody loves it. We could start doing that. And I think that's a good idea. If they're their uh, season pass is to give you more substantial story, different types of modes, yeah, I'd probably be down with it. Especially in the Star Wars game. That's my thoughts. Yeah. And I'll take care of this next story because I got a little something to add. Wireless Xbox One controller adapter for PC is coming this month. Good, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can use your Xbox One controller, which is not as good as Xbox 360 controller on your PC now. Oh, stop it, Briar. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should have known. the controller got worse. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't play on PC much, do you? I don't think Well, you do. that's about to change. I just oh. ordered a new PC. You did? Ooh. Yeah. Um, there, there was a few reasons for it. One of them was, uh, as I get more into streaming, uh, I want to be able to stream and record at the same time. And to do that really well, you kind of need a PC. Yeah. You kind of need two computers. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> one to stream and one to record on. Yeah. Uh, I, I was uh, wondering if it was a power issue because that Mac you got is the god of... Yeah, that thing's pretty beastly. The, the PC is going to be even more powerful. It's going to have... You know, it's it's got all the... It's got a... I think it's a 980 Ti graphics card and... Uh, Holy hell. That's good. Right. Yeah. Oh I was thinking god. about going SLI, but I don't really think I need it. And then I was... Um, I got the new 6700... Intel processor, which isn't quite top of the line, but it's pretty good for a four-core processor. I think there'll be plenty for streaming. And then, you know, I've talked about the Oculus Rift a lot, and you know, you guys know I'm super interested in that, and that's kind of mm -hmm. around the corner. And uh, I definitely want to get into that. Fallout 4 is coming oh. out. I, it kind of just felt like time to get a new PC. So Do yeah. your damn thing, I brother. Do your thing. And I'll tell you what. I got a pretty good deal on it. Like it's a pretty beef, beefy computer, and it's like seventeen hundred dollars. Not too bad. Really? Yeah. We we might have to talk post show because I got seventeen hundred to spend. If you <laughs> built your own, like, are you building a PC, Brian? Oh or God, no. it? okay. <laughs> He's done with those days. Have you? Yeah, not I was just wondering because it's it's cheaper that way. But well, you know, <laughs> what I did is I went to about four or five different like uh, places that you know do custom build computers. I had some ideas in mind. I definitely wanted, like, quiet was one of the main things. I wanted a quiet PC. I wanted something that was powerful that, you know, could stream easily. And I wanted, like, a new graphics card. So, basically, with that in mind, I went and shopped around, and I could spend, it, like, for the same PC, I could get, like, a Dell that would cost, like, $2,700, <laughs> or, you know, this company would do it for $2,400, and I finally found a company that does it for $1,700. And you said it's an HP? No. What is it? Uh, I think it was called Cyber... Cyber Power? Holy yeah, hell. Yeah, I've heard of that. It's something like that. Mm -hmm. I have their emails and shit in my e inbox, but I'm not going to look it up right now. Are you going to plug your Xbox power. One controller into it wirelessly? Um, maybe <laughs> for certain games. I'd rather use an Xbox 360 controller. I still have wired Xbox 360 controllers around. This, and, oh, this adapter, by the way, isn't compatible with 360. I should just note that. So Why would it be? Well, because you were saying the 360 controller, you'd rather use that. This adapter isn't compatible. Right. Okay. I'm just I'm just letting you know. I have a wired Xbox 360 controller. Oh, okay. Never mind. I think it's just meant in general. I'm like, no, you have a wireless. I was just sitting board. back watching the sparks fly. That was I was confused. Okay. All right. What All right, are we so next? Bloodborne Game of the Year Edition has been announced. I just talked about Bloodborne my wife this morning. It's one of my favorite games of the year. But unfortunately, after I beat it, we kind of stepped away from it. Now we got Game of the Year, which, of course, will be the Bloodborne-based game with the DLC. I think the DLC is coming, right? It's not been released yet. It's coming the same day as the Old Hunters, which comes out on the 24th. 
my birthday, as I've mentioned a lot of times. So, yeah. <laughs> How could we forget? <laughs> you guys can't forget right. about me. You love me. If you guys have not had an opportunity to play Bloodborne, Blood Pawn, please play the game. It's really a rewarding experience. Yeah, make sure you play Bloodborne and not Blood Porn. Just, just well, just Google, 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 Google both and go with what you like the most. <laughs> oh my but, God, um, I think no, I think we're gonna choose bad advice. Blood Even if yeah, you like don't it, do that, don't go with it. <laughs> <laughs> don't search Seek blood professional porn. help. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I gotta say though, Kate and I just did a video on what we our game of the year so far. We went through about eight or nine different games that we got this year, and Bloodborne was one of the the ones we talked about. That was a really no. I'm talking about the Born one this time. Uh, but it was one of those games that, like she said, she said it was so hard to really master. But once you got it down, it was one of the most rewarding experiences I've had all year, honestly. It's probably in my top two PlayStation exclusives of the two PS exclusives that we've gotten this year. But it's really a, a very, very fun game. If you guys haven't played it, please do it. If you have played it, let us know in the comments if you like the game. Shall we continue? Yeah, sounds good to me. Over 9 million people have participated in the Star Wars Battlefront beta. God, that's a lot of people playing the game. But then again, and even with that many people, it uh, didn't buckle one bit. The server stayed up, and they were uh, in pretty good shape. Wow, that is something to, to, to really uh, be proud of, especially with the uh, history of DICE and EA and their servers. I guess that's their way of smacking the haters, maybe. <laughs> you know? I mean, everybody who's played Battlefield has instant memories of the pain of, of the online servers. And so uh, I guess they've really gone back and redone their infrastructure and made sure that uh, Battlefront works flawlessly because I haven't had, I didn't have any problem getting into that game. Wow. Nine million across uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. That's a, that's a really yeah. that's something to really be proud of. Wow. I just hope they balance it so like out of all the things they can fix because obviously the game's got to be just about done. Because it's coming out in a month. They must be like finishing development. I just hope they friggin' fix the balancing between the Rebels and the Imperials in Assault on Hoth. That really needs to be fixed. Other than that, great job. Gotcha. Briar, would you like to do the next story? Because it is Destiny-centric. Uh, Bungie addresses concerns over the future of Destiny microtransactions. So people were... Uh, a little upset. They had, basically what happened, right, is not, we all knew about the microtransactions coming, uh, but there was some information data mined about uh, being able to uh, get silver, get a consumable that would basically be a three of coins for silver. Yeah. Uh, with silver is that new, uh, it's that new type of uh, money that you actually buy, right, and then you can spend it on these emotes or anything from the Tess Everest. Uh, trading company. Uh, so Bungie came out and said this isn't going to happen. There's no plan to make this happen, but there's also a rumor that you'll be able to buy a level boost, right? It's just to be able to... To 25? Uh, no, to purchase. Uh, so you have, like, your new subclasses, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll be able to just buy a boost so that you can just fill in all those bubbles and be done with it. You won't have to actually go through the leveling up process for that. Wow. Uh, they didn't mention anything about that. They didn't uh, Luke Smith didn't actually address that, so you know, some people are still saying it's out there. Um, if it happens, it's it's worrisome. Yeah. I, I don't really like that kind of thing. But the it's thing also with microtransactions is going to do in time anyway. I don't know. Yeah, the thing with microtransactions is like because as soon as you bring up DLC, season pass, microtransactions, it's immediately negative thoughts. I think we all think that, and it's like, oh, this is going to be bad, but I think the emotes are a great thing, and I like that a lot, and I think Agreed. we've discussed this before, that as long as these developers and companies, like Activision, do this right, like, it's not an issue at all, as long as they don't get greedy and start selling things like uh, strange coins or something like that. Then yeah, Activision's we'll... been doing it right with Call of Duty for years now, so yep. I've actually got confidence in them that they'll, they'll continue to do it right. Yeah, as long as it's cash or not casual, uh, cosmetic things. That's the, what I was looking for. Cosmetic things, like if, even if they started selling like ghost skins, I'd be fine with that. And like in Call of Duty, yeah, they've sold like camel packs. So like that's yep. totally fine. That's totally okay. And, and I think that's the direction they need to keep going. I don't think they need to sell anything as far as microtransactions that'll change the degree of play. Like if you sell something that basically levels up your subclass. That takes away all the effort that you would have had to go through to do that. 
makes you stronger than you would have been. And maybe a guy who you just went against in the crucible, now you got shit that he can't even compete with because you've unlocked everything. I think that that could it's a slippery slope that mm-hmm. could really unbalance the equilibrium the equilibrium of the game. I think that they need to really be careful with that. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I also heard a rumor that they were selling I forget the name of the little uh, consumable that that released with the Taken King that allowed you to level up your character to level 25. That there was a rumor that they were going to actually sell those as microtransactions as well. Oh, okay. For for new characters. That's why I said that. I read that online that there was a possibility of them selling that as a microtransaction. So if you, Where did if you hear that? New, was that data mined or was there any basis to that? It's it's nebulous at this point. It's been a few days since I, I looked at it. I didn't really report on it, so yeah, don't I hold me to it. But I did I did read that that was a possible idea for microtransactions. And I think that's another one of those situations. But hopefully they keep it all, you know, as far just just keep it on the visual aesthetic. I don't know. Skins, like if they sold those, I would probably buy them. Like when I wanted to start up a new character, I don't really want to start them from level one anymore. Yeah, well, that there, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that, that that will screw up the balance of the game, honestly. Get me Nobody's, up to level 25, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, because everybody was stronger than you. Level one is the most boring thing to do now in Destiny. I would just skip that. Yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. Right. So that, that may be a, a real thing that they're considering. I don't know. I felt really good getting my my hunter to level twenty five using that consumable. It felt awesome. Yeah. So. Nintendo NX dev kits are going out to developers. Mm-hmm. I like yep. the uh, sound of this. I'm yeah. really looking forward to Nintendo's next console. I've I've been hearing more rumors that this thing is really going to be a a blend between two consoles, a portable and a home console. That's going to run what... the same OS. The games are going to be shareable between them. Yep. Oh man. This gets me excited. It really is, does. And the fact that it says it has industry leading tech and supposedly yep. it has like a mobile chip, like we've like basically there's a version you could take on the road with you. Basically, it seems like this hybrid console is going to be a real thing. Yeah. Well, this is another one of the stories I did over the weekend. Uh, they released a little bit of information. Nintendo, of course, didn't they didn't speculate on rumor or conjecture, but uh, they said that Square Enix more than likely has one of these dev kits. Uh, they said that this is a state-of-the-art system with state-of-the-art chips, that it does have the ability to play you know, as a console or as a portable, so you can take it on the road. Uh, they actually talked about how the PlayStation Vita works with the PS4 and how you have to be right there in the same network, and how playing with the Wii U, Wii U you have to have your controller somewhere in the vicinity of the Wii U, and how this will be different. And that makes me really, really excited. The fact that in the article I read, they said state-of-the-art chips, meaning at least somewhere comparable to what we see now in the current gen. Uh, And the fact that this is a console portable hybrid really gets me excited. I would love love to be able to play like a new state-of-the-art Nintendo game and, damn it, I got to go somewhere. I got to go to a family function and I just take maybe a part of the controller off or I don't know how it's going to work. I'm super excited to see it. But you take this little peripheral, this portable with you, and then you can just pop it open and play it anywhere. That's got to be the best feeling. Man, I can't wait. So here's what they said in the article. It says, Nintendo is apparently sending out dev kits for its upcoming NX console, revealing new details about the system. So the Wall Street Journal claims sources are saying the console will come with industry-leading chips to ensure it can compete with the PS4 and Xbox One and coax back third-party developers, as well as a mobile unit that could either be used in conjunction with the console, like with the Wii U and the gamepad, or take it on the road for separate use. Does that mean... Like, you're going to be able to take those console experiences with you? Is that what that means? means You'll be able to use it like the Wii U gamepad while you're at home, or you'll be able to take it on the road. That's awesome. uh, Whether you can actually play the same... Quality games? Yeah, on on the road as you can at home is questionable, but, like, it opens up a lot of cool things, right? It's like, you know, there... I've heard rumors that they're running the same OS so that, you know, it's easier for a, a developer to develop, like, a coherent experience and maybe, like, a maybe like just a lower-res version of the game for when you're out, you know, you know, taking a ride in the car or whatever you're mm-hmm. doing, you know? I don't know. I don't know how they use that, but, I mean, it just seems great. Uh, also, if they develop if they develop a game or, like, an old game, if they port an old game like Super Mario 
into this new OS, you could play it on your TV, you could play it on your portable, you got it on both platforms, you're good to go. I mean, the back catalog for Nintendo is like no other back catalog in games. Yeah. So, like, that alone it would be amazing. Um, also, like, having the option to connect your portable device to your TV is a little bit gimmicky, but there are some uses for it that are pretty cool, you know? So... It's not bad, you know. I, I like the idea of this. I like the, I like the symmetry between the two, right? It's like with the the two platforms working together. I like the the ideas that can come out of that. Yeah, I like the potential here. Here. One box, right? There. You buy it and you get both, or if you yeah. don't buy two things. To me, the the options are endless with this thing, right? Because if, if history is any indication, this portable is going to somehow, in some way, be compatible with 3DS games. Because every time they make a portable, they make some way on that portable for you to play the last generation of portable games on it. They did it with the SP, they did it with the DS, they did it with 3DS. So hopefully they're able to continue that because people who have 3DSs would love to be able to bring those games, that library, onto this new thing. And the possibilities are endless. What if you can play those on your TV at that point? With Another this new... thing I'm curious about is because uh, when they say interested in leading chips to say it can compete with PS4 and Xbox One, this makes me wonder if they're just making like similar technology to compete with those consoles. Are they preparing for Sony and Microsoft's next generation though? Because they need to keep that in mind. Like the next PlayStation Xbox will come out. Will they have a powerful enough console to compete with those as well as the generation we're in? I don't now? think they need to worry about that yet, Robbie. Yeah, I, I think that's a ways away. It's too early. And it, I mean But they're coming out middle of the generation. Like I think they kinda have to have some preparation for that. Uh, the new <sighs> consoles are how old? Two years. I don't think it's the middle of the generation. Yeah. I think they right now they got four years at least with these consoles left. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think they. I think they got plenty of time for this NX. It's going to come out in 2016, based on the Wall Street Journal uh, story that I read. And if you continue, Robbie, it will say it. That's what all the speculation is that it'll be coming somewhere in the first quarter, second quarter of 2016. Um, and if that happens, and this thing is on a power scale comparable to the Xbox One and PS4, they've got unbelievable first parties. If they actually treated them right and put them out there for the people to see and people say, wow, this is fucking amazing. It's just as, It looks as beautiful as an Xbox One game or a PS4 game. People are going to gravitate towards it. It's Nintendo. Sure. Even if they made it just a little bit more powerful so it just looked like a port of Call of Duty just looked a little bit better on on the, let's call it the NX, the NX right? Just a little bit better, right? It ran at 60 frames per second, but it was 1080p. It was a true 1080p. If Destiny ran it, you know, it just looked a little bit better than it did on PS4. That's a like win, that, yeah. Yeah, that's a win, man. Like it, it doesn't have to like blow everything out of the water because you get all those you get all those multi-platform games, but then you also get the Nintendo stuff. Oh man. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But the big question is like because the problem is is this going to be enough to get third parties back because first of all, Nintendo has to prove that third parties can sell on their console and that's the biggest the struggle they're in right now, I think. Well, Nintendo has to also reduce the cost of porting games over to their console. Yeah, so this, game, this console's got to be PC so, architecture. Mm-hmm. It's got to yeah. be Blu-ray. You know, it's got to be something similar to what's out right now because yeah. if developers got to, you know, spend a lot more time and effort to port it to the, the NX... They're not going to bother. They're not going to bother. Gonna, yeah, it's going to be the same way it was with the fucking uh, GameCube. But if you know if it's similar architecture, it doesn't take a ton of effort to do it. Then there are going to be some games that do come out, some third-party games, and hopefully some of them will be you know as good or better than the stuff on the Xbox One or the PS4. PS4, that would be amazing, man. And then like all of a sudden the the NX becomes a real you know a real player. And yeah. then if they sell, let's say Call of Duty, so let's say Call of Duty 2017 comes out on the NX. And it's as good as it is for the Xbox One and PS4. You know, then you're a new console buyer. What are you looking at? You can buy, you know, Xbox One. You can buy a PS4. You get Sony exclusives. You get Xbox exclusives, or you get fucking Nintendo exclusives. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there's no, there's no, there's no competition yeah, there really. Yeah, right. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you love Last of Us. Nintendo is Nintendo. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely right. I mean, God. One day, I'm, I'm dreaming that one day they do remaster the Mario 64 game. Oh, God. 
That's all I need. That's, that's a perfect segue into our next topic. Yeah, it's, you think it's not made by EA because you ain't going to get it. That one. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. Oh, uh, EA has no interest or time for HD remasters of old games. I am shocked to hear that. We're in agreement. (laughs) (laughs) I'm surprised coming from EA, because this sounds like that Mass Effect collection, too, that people have been speculating about. That's probably not going to happen now. Wow. All right, let me open this up here. I don't know, man. I I wouldn't... Actually, Mass Effect, a collection, does seem like it's a feasible thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot... Kate was talking about that last night. That's a game I really miss playing, Mass Effect. It was an awesome game. Just remaster that. A lot of people would buy it. Is that one of the uh, backward compatible games for Xbox One? <sighs> no, right? it was. It wasn't on the first list. No, it wasn't. No. Well, they should get it on that list. Yeah. Yeah, and we'd all have it again. Yeah. Yeah, because I'd rather buy a five dollar version from GameStop <laughs> than a six dollar <laughs> version. <laughs> so they had some things to say about this too so EA's COO Peter Moore said when you remaster an old game or one that just came out he says it feels like pushing stuff out because you've run out of ideas now I partially agree with that but I also think it's because obviously these remasters must be making a lot of money they must be selling well if so many yeah. people are doing them right now so basically he's saying that EA that, that's not our approach of remastering old games we're looking at the future and this brand and portfolio and stuff like that, that's basically he wants to push things forward. I agree with that, but I don't know. I'm surprised, because EA, do you think they'd want to do remasters? But I Well, know. I agree with you, Robbie. I partially agree. I, I think for some developers, it is a lack of ideas, but I think that there are some games that need to be remastered for the new generation. You know, some games are just so good, amazing experiences that the visual aesthetic kind of fades with time, like and what? These, Absolutely. Say what? Like what? Final Fantasy VII. That's one. If Final Fantasy VII looked different, a lot more people would play it. It's just an amazing story. Well, amazing... different, I'd play it. If... <laughs> Get out of here, man. I love that game. Get out of here, Brian. <laughs> that was a great God comeback, man. damn it. Crazy um, old man. Get out of here. But uh, I think that some games... You know, over time, they fade. They look, you know, jagged edges, polygons sticking out of the the side of characters, and the gameplay is just so good that a lot of people playing the new hardware look at those older games like, oh, I'd rather play this new Call of Duty. It looks so much better. Some games deserve that HD treatment. Mario 64 is one of them. I would rather play a reimagining of a game than just a remaster. Like, I I don't really want to see Mario 64 just come out again with better graphics. I would. I'd rather take the ideas that were in there and kind of build upon them and, like, you know, move on, do a uh, Mario, you know, a a 2 version. 64 2? Yeah, Yeah, that that would work too. That'd be much more appealing to me because I I played that game once, you know, and I'm not really interested in playing it again. You can play it. Can't you play it on the 3DS? I have it, it for the 3DS? It's on the DS. The DS. Yeah, but you can play it on 3DS. I got that. Here's the thing with these remasters. Some of them make a lot of sense and are really great, like the Master Chief Collection. Well, okay, after it was fixed, and the Uncharted Collection, those make a lot of sense. They're a great value, amazing games, especially with, like, Halo 2, when you can remaster a game, make it look gorgeous, and especially when you improve the frame rate from 30 to 60, that's mm-hmm. a big difference, and that's great. When it's, like... Devil May Cry or Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. Get uh, yeah. the fuck yeah. out of here with you're that. Right. That is complete BS. Like, just being honest. Yeah. You're right. So Those did not need to be released at all. I mean, but I guess it all depends on the gamer. Somebody bought them, right? Games I'm nostalgic for are not the same games that Briar Rabbit's nostalgic for. Or you're nostalgic for. I guess it all depends on the ones that grabbed you the first time you played it. You know, yeah. but you're right. Sleeping Dogs, DMC, no fucking way. Even Halo, though, like, I bought the Halo Master Chief Collection because I was I loved Combat Evolved. It was one of the best games I ever played at the time. Uh, going back to it, it was it was sort of cool in a nostalgia way, but just like the gameplay mechanics and yep. the way it controlled, it just felt so fucking old, man. You're it was right. Just like this, it's not the same anymore. If somebody were to make make you know Combat Evolved two, right, like. That would be more interesting to me. You know, Halo. the new Halo is way more interesting to me than going back and playing Combat Evolved. Yeah, well... Even though, I, like, I, I thought that I'd be more interested in it than I am, 
Like, it turns out, like, that that's one of my favorite games of all time. And it just it didn't hold my interest at all. That's I feel exactly the same way. When I got Master Chief Collection, I really only, only wanted to see the new Halo 2. But then I started looking at the other ones and running around and playing and pulling my gun out. It felt so dated. I had gotten so used to the new modern way that first-person shooters are played, I felt like I was stepping outside of my element. Yeah. Games like Shinmu, which hold real emotional value for me because of the way it was back then before this new... That game is not going to hold up. <laughs> it doesn't. It no. doesn't. Look, I played it on the Dreamcast a few times this year, and running around pisses me off. The way you actually control the character and, and, and control the camera, it, I can't believe they actually did it that way because someone actually really mastered the way the controls in a third-person game should work. Well, they didn't have it. Didn't have dual thumbsticks on the Dreamcast, right? Yeah, it didn't. Oh God, it was the worst. It was the, t- the control was so bad. Yeah, and they I kind of uh, Goldeneye. That was like that was a seminal experience. Yeah, that game controls like garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's more it's more or less about that connection you have to an old game. You know, the, the feeling that that you want to relive. Sometimes when you go back, it just doesn't work. I think uh, I think you know a lot of times we get hyped for this stuff. I was hyped for Master Chief Collection. I was hyped for to go back and play Combat Evolved and use that God Pistol that was in the multiplayer of Combat Evolved. Yep. And you know I think I would have been better off just kind of have remembering that game for what I loved about it <laughs> instead of actually experiencing, you know how how dated it is. But I think that, you know, at the same time, though, I think that 3D games are kind of in a worse spot for that. Like, PlayStation and early Xbox games, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, early Xbox games, you know, those graphics were rough by today's standards. You look at PlayStation yeah. games, original PlayStation games, and they look kind of bad. Really you know, you bad. mentioned Toshinden. Terrible. Battle Arena Toshinden, that game looked Terrible. amazing when it came out. But now Sophia you look at it, had the best music. Sophia. Now you look at it, and it looks like incredibly it's terrible. like Tetris. It looks like Tetris. Yeah, you're right. You're but with right. like the 2D games of the Super NES era, like you could still it's get away still, with that yeah. art style. Yep. Yeah. You know, we saw uh, Rocket Knight. Rocket Knight? Yeah, Rocket Knight come out last year. Shovel Knight. It looks like an SNES game, right? Yeah, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight, thank you. <laughs> it looks like an SNES game. Rocket Knight. I was so and it, you know, like, that, that art style still holds up. Those graphics can still be usable, but PlayStation 1 graphics do not hold up anymore. <laughs> like, no. You can't, you can't go back to that era. And, and I guess it all depends on the developer. It's like Capcom, when they did the Resident Evil remake, mm-hmm. remake, they gave you the option to play with the old tank controls or the new updated modern uh, third-person adventure style. Mm-hmm. And it works. You know, I got younger brothers who never played it. They came over my house and played it, and I was playing tank mode. They said, ooh, that looks awesome. Let me try. They were running around. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. I changed the control, and they were playing like a regular game. Mm-hmm. So I, as long as the developer keeps in mind that this is dated, the, origi- the, the original uh, fans of the game are going to get it. But these new kids are playing these new games are not going to understand. Did it they play through the whole thing? No. Uh, no they only did it, they didn't experience all the backtracking you had to do and the inventory no. management you had to do. No. And those were those. That stuff was limitations of how big the disc was, how much memory was in the system. You know, you couldn't have a big inventory because there was only like a limited amount of memory on that system to actually hold that stuff. Mm-hmm. You were you were you had to do all that back. St- tracking because there's only a limited amount of space on that disc so the world could only be so big you know like they couldn't just like keep extending how big these worlds were they had to like you know they had to make this thing fit on a CD yeah and I mean memory cards come on the, the original PlayStation memory cards I forget how many megabytes they were I think there were 8 megabytes and yeah, cost eight, like 60 bucks 60 dollars yeah. for 8 yeah. megabytes yeah and, and I remember as time grew, grew on, you could get 12 megabytes, and then it got to, like, I forget, 500 megabytes. Eight megabytes? And now <laughs> we're running hard drives with, like, multiple terabytes, which is hundreds of thousands of megabytes, I think. Like, that's a lot. Unless yeah. you bought a PS4 or an Xbox One, then you get half. Yeah, five. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. best technology of 2005. <laughs> 
don't know. It's, it's interesting to think about the remakes. Like, I definitely, like, when, when you guys talk about Sleeping Dogs, like, doing, like, a remakes of games that came out last year, that seems a little ridiculous. Or two years they ago, have, that seems yeah. a little ridiculous. Remasters have a place and a time for different games. Yeah, like, I think. And, like, c- c- going back to stuff that was on the SNES, like, I'd almost rather see a Shovel Knight, like, somebody just taking those ideas, reimagining them, um, and bringing them into, like, giving them some modern gameplay mechanics, but using, like, kind of that old-school flair. That, to me, is much more appealing than somebody just taking, let's say, let's say Super Mario 3 and just reissuing it, you know? like Yeah, that's boring. I mean, that's, it's, not, it's not the same to go back to Super Mario 3 anymore. But if somebody took the ideas, the best stuff out of Super Mario 3, but then added in some modern gameplay mechanics, then we got something that is worth talking about, I think. Hmm. Huh. Same goes with Halo. I mean, basically, that's what we're getting. When you get a sequel, like Halo 5, that's what we're getting, right? Is we're getting a new version. We're still talking about, um, you know, Master Chief and, like, a basic space shooter, but, you know, with reimagined new new ideas for 2015. And, and that's a whole other subcategory, right, for remakes. If there's a series that has been going on for many, many years, like Halo... Uh, like Uncharted, and it's gotten to the point where the the originator, the original games, are old, and a lot of these new gamers have not had the opportunity to play it. Then remasters make sense because you can catch up with the story, you can find out what people liked about the game. That or you just do point. a cutscene last time on Master Chief. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like you can do the story catch up stuff easy. Uh, That's true. Without yeah. making a pet play through eight hours of like antiquated gameplay. It's way more than that, especially with Master Chief, and especially with Uncharted. There's a lot more time than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. You know, at the same time, though, if you go back and you play Uncharted 1 and you've never played it before and you're enjoying it, then God bless you. You know, like, yeah. who, who's anybody to tell you that you're doing it wrong? Mm-hmm. You're having a good time? Do it. Somebody, you, you feel like you got good value for that? Great. The company made the product you wanted, you bought it, everybody's happy. Kate's, Absolutely. you know how my wife is. She's she's really, really enjoying that. She's really happy we got it for, for our system. Mm-hmm. You know, because she went through all three of them. I went through the first two. And then the third one, I just watched her play it, you know. And now she's reliving it all again, getting super excited about the fourth. Yeah, I'm still pissed off they took out the motion control for that lock crossing scene. I'm not playing it until they put it back. <laughs> I was like, hold on a sec. Wait, what? <laughs> that shit was next gen! <laughs> oh, man. That was terrible. No. All right. I think we should wrap it up, guys. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right, Beasley, I know you got a lot coming up, so why don't you get us started off? What, what you got coming up this week? Oh, man, I got a lot of a lot of videos coming out this week. You guys stay tuned to the Beastly Gamer channel. I'm going to try to get this raid done this week. I actually gave you a shout-out in one of my videos, so make sure you watch it, Briar Rabbit. Uh, I'm, go- I- I'm at the very end of the raid. I'm at Oryx, and we have to complete this. And I'm not going to stop until I get it done. I'm gonna- Every day I come home from work this week, I'm going to try to find a party because I don't have any fucking friends. Nobody likes me, man. They all, they all like you, Briar. Nobody likes me. What can I say? Oh. I got a magnetic personality. Yeah, I think there's a magnet behind you. Let me, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I want to try to get that done. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and I got a lot of videos coming out this week, so hopefully people enjoy that. But I want to say thank you to everybody who watches this. I go through the comments after every show, uh, day, days after, and try to get through uh, everybody's comments and questions. Thank you all so much for being a part of this. It makes the whole thing so so worthwhile. Thank you all. Thanks, Robbie. Right on time. Briar. Yeah. Oh, Seals over here. Yeah. Oh, All right, Robbie. What do you got going on this week? <laughs> you, have to, you set the feels. I have to do it. <laughs> what do you got going on this week, Robbie? I don't know. It has been an awfully long time since I put on my last video. <laughs> Briar, I said, cool. probably do that. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, what you doing this week? Uh, he yeah. affirmed that you weren't doing anything. He just... <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh, man. What right, well, I got week? a lot going on this week. Uh, I got a ton of videos that I've already got planned. I haven't started making them like Beastly has. He's just Beastly is just going extra. Sure. He, yeah, he's <laughs> he's on top of shit over there. <laughs> uh, I've done a lot of 
um, a lot of research on a new audio interface bo board, so hopefully my sound quality is actually going to get it better in my videos. I'm really looking forward to doing that. I'm a true geek at heart, and I can't. I love fiddling with that kind of stuff, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Hard Mode Raid is coming out on Friday. The Planet Destiny team will be streaming that. The Planet Destiny podcast hopes, hosts will be streaming that live on Friday, so that should be a ton of fun. Uh, I think that's all I got, really, for for right now. Nice. Yes, that's it. <laughs> and, I like how you're looking up like like you're looking into the corner of your brain. It's, it's so good. Yeah, just getting hyped for all the big games coming up, too. So yeah. damn close now. I'm hyped for the hard mode. I can't wait to get into that hard mode. Mm -hmm. And get the gear. The gear, baby. The gear. The loot. The loot. Give me that loot. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.